Hi, my name is Gloria Robert. Today we shall be looking at the topic digestive system. Objectives of lesson. By the end of the lesson, learners should be able to one define digestion. Two, define digestion. Three, mention the parts of the alimentary canal of various organisms and the function. Four, define the term enzymes. Five, mention the digestive enzymes used for digestion in man, their locations and functions. And six, differentiate between the various alimentary canals. So what is digestion? Digestion is the process whereby food is broken down into simpler molecules that are soluble and can be absorbed in the body. Now the food we eat needs to be digested first before it can be used by our body cells. Now the process by which we take in food or eat food is called ingestion. Now digested food is absorbed and assimilated into the body fluid. The body fluid here means into the bloodstream in order to give energy, promote growth and health. While the undigested solid food is removed via the anus or through the anus. And this process is called ingestion. Ingestion. Now food, what happens to food? When we ingest food, some of them get digested, while some are undigested. The digested food are absorbed into the bloodstream, and from there they are assimilated by body cells. What do we mean by assimilated? It means that they are used up by the body cells. If they are not used up, they can give energy, promote health, or make us healthy. While the undigested solid waste are removed through the anus in a process called ingestion. Now there are two types of digestion processes, namely, one, mechanical process. Now this process by which large food particles are broken down into smaller units with the aid of the teeth is a mechanical breakdown of digestion. So when you put in food and you chew it with your teeth to break it into smaller pieces, that is mechanical digestion. The second one which should finalize the process of digestion is the chemical process. The process by which large food particles are broken down into smaller soluble and absorbable units with the aid of digestive enzyme is known as chemical breakdown of digestion. In this aspect, the food has to be broken down to soluble small size that can enter into the cell so that the cell can use them up. And this we require what we call the digestive enzymes. So study the image below. Here is a large food molecule which is broken down by the teeth and that process is called mechanical digestion. And that is also further broken down by the use of enzymes and that is chemical digestion. After this, they can enter into the cell for the cell to make use of them. So the digestive system is made up of the alimentary tract organs and glands that can secrete digestive enzymes. Now during the process of digestion, the food passes through a long tube starting with an inlet such as the mouth where the food goes in through and ending at an outlet such as the anus or cloaca as we can see in some organisms. And this forms the alimentary tract or canal. Now the alimentary canal is structured to break down food, produce digestive enzymes and absorb digestive food and water. So let's look at some digestive system in various organisms. We are starting by looking at planaria. Now planaria is an example of a free living flatworm and it belongs to the phylum Platyhermintus. Now the alimentary canal of the planaria is made up of the mouth, which is found on the ventral side of its body. And this leads to the buccal cavity. cavity. The buccal cavity leads to the pharynx, and then the pharynx ends at or leads to the small intestine, which is branched into three directions. This you can see in the image above. Then, digestion occurs in the intestine, and the undigested food is ingested through the mouth as well. And these you see in the image below. Take your time and go through. So let's look at tape four. This is an example of a flatworm, and it belongs to the phylum Platyhermitis as well. Now, tapeworm is a parasitic worm, which has no alimentary canal. Thus, it has no mouth for ingestion, nor does it have an anus for ingestion. So how does it take in its food? Fine. It lives inside the intestine of its host and taking the digested food of its host through its body. So it feeds on digested food of its host, such as human, thereby depriving them 
of its uterus. It does not have mouth, neither does it have an anus. The food enters into the body straight away. So look at the image. So let's talk about the earthworm. This belongs to the phylum Annelida. Now the alimentary canal of the earthworm is a straight tube with a mouth and an outlet which is called the anus. Now earthworm feeds on leaves, vegetables and humus on soil top. Look at the image of an earthworm, the alimentary canal of an earthworm to be specific. Now it is made up of the mouth. The mouth is used for ingestion, taking in food. Okay? Now this leads to the pharynx. The pharynx leads to the esophagus. The esophagus serves as a passage for the food from the mouth to the crops. Now the crops is used for what? Storing the food temporarily. And then it leads to the gizzard. The gizzard leads to the long straight intestine where digestion occurs and food is absorbed. And from there, the waste is removed through the anus. Don't forget, that is by ingestion. So like I said, the crop helps serve food temporarily and the gizzard grinds the food for easy digestion. So here is the image of the alimentary canal of an earthworm. The next one we are looking at is the insects. Now this belongs to the phylum Atropoda and the class Insecta. Now insects like cockroaches feed on household materials like boots, paper, food, clothes and so on. Why insects like grasshoppers feed on leaves? Now the alimentary canal of insects, example cockroach, is divided into three parts, namely the foregut, the midgut and the hindgut. Now the foregut include the mouth, which is used to cut and crush the leaves. Now this leads to the salivary gland, which secretes saliva to soften the food, the leaves. And then this leads to the pharynx. Pharynx leads to the esophagus. Esophagus is also known as the gullet. And this leads to the crop. Remember that the crop is used for storing food temporarily. And that leads to the giza, which is used for grinding the food. Now from there, the food goes into the stomach, which is found in the mid gut. Then from there, it moves to the intestine. Intestine, we have the small intestine, which is the ileum, and the large intestine, which is the colon. Okay? And the food leads to the rectum, where the physis is stored for a while, and then it is removed through the anus. However, take note of this. Digestion occurs at the foregut and midgut, while the hindgut is for water absorption. Now, solid physis pellets collected by the mapigian tubules are ingested from the anus. The meaning is that the waste of insects are usually in dry form. They are like small pellets because most of the water has been reabsorbed back into the body of the insect. So here is the alimentary canal of insects, cockroach. Go through it, study the parts, and take note of their functions. So we have birds here. Now, birds do not have teeth. Rather, their mouth has been modified into what we call honey beak, which is used for picking the food. In many birds, the feet also show adaptation for feeding. It, they can use their feet to catch their prey, hold it, and also assist them also in eating. They hold the bed in one place in order for them to eat or their prey. Now, the alimentary canal of the bed consists of the following, the pharynx. The pharynx leads to the esophagus, which is a kind of a, a tube that transports the food from the pharynx to the crop. The crop is used for storing food. The gizzard is used for what? Grand the food. And this leads to what we call the proventriculus, also known as the glandular stomach. The glandular stomach can release certain enzymes that can also digest food. And this leads to the intestine. From the intestine move into the anus and ends in what we call the cloaca. So the outlet where feces or waste comes out from in bed is called cloaca. Now digestion is completed in the small intestine by the action of intestinal and pancreatic juice. The action also occurs here, that means the absorption process also occurs here, and the solid waste passes through the anus into the cloaca. Take note, there are small stones in the gizzard which also assist in the grinding of food. So they can ask you which part of um, the bed contain stones that can help in grinding of food, such as maize or other seeds? The answer definitely is gizzard. So here is the image of the bed, go through the alimentary canal and take note of the parts and the functions. So let's move on. We are going to look at man, yes, you, I, all of us. The alimentary canal of humans starts with the mouth. The mouth is used for what? 
good ingestion taken in food and then the food is broken down by the teeth that is mechanical digestion so the teeth grind the food into smaller bits and from there we have what we call the salivary glands which secretes saliva the saliva softens the food and of course contains um, a digestive enzyme that also helps in digesting carbohydrate and then from there the tongue helps to mix the food with the saliva and roll it into a ball shape called bolus good and from there it enters into the gullet or esophagus and from there it moves into the stomach the function of the stomach is to store food temporarily from there it enters into the small intestine where the final stages of digestion occurs and the food is absorbed that is taken into the blood stream and from there it enters into the large intestine also known as colon where there is absorption of water and then this waste product is taken out through the anus and the process remember again is called ingestion so take note of this during swallowing of food the entrance to the trachea must be closed in order to prevent choking the wall of the esophagus contracts and relaxes in order to push the food down okay and that process is called peristasis so look at the image very close to the alimentary canal of human. And of course, study the alimentary canal of human. From the mouth, the food moves to the esophagus, from the esophagus to the stomach, from there to the small intestine, then to the large intestine, through the rectum, and the waste comes out through the anus. All right. So let's look at the difference between the alimentary canal of bed and grasshopper. We have bed here, we have grasshopper here. Number one is that the mouth of the bed is modified into big for picking food, while the mouth of the grasshopper is modified into what we call the um, chewing mouth parts. The mouth parts include the mandible and the maxilla. And number two here is that tongue is present in beds, but grasshoppers don't have tongue, so tongue is absent. Number three is that the metric canal in beds ends as cloaca, while the alimentary canal of grasshopper ends as anus. Number four is the mapigian tubule are absent in beds, but in grasshopper they are connected to the alimentary canal, so they are present. Number five is that pancreas is present in bed, but grasshopper don't have pancreas because pancreas are capable of releasing digestive enzymes. And then number six here is that alimentary canal of bed is very long, while that of grasshopper. It's short so take your time and get the differences you can also get the difference between alimentary canal of beds and man and so on so man is an olozoic organism what do we mean by this this is because man feed on solid organic substances which are produced by green plants so they feed on plants and other animals and they eat them wholly in large sizes and thus they need to break the food into smaller sizes before they can be used up and that break the food means the food must first be digested now they require digestive enzyme to help break down the food that they eat so here is a beautiful woman eating a meal food okay now let's look at the digestive enzyme we have various digestive enzymes in the alimentary canal of mama especially man in the mouth we have saliva is known as a digestive juice. Inside the saliva, we have an enzyme known as the tyalin. The function of the tyalin is that it converts the substrate known as starch to the product known as maltose. Tyalin, it converts starch to maltose. So let's look at the stomach. By the time the food gets into the stomach, we have a digestive juice known as the gastric juice. It produces two enzymes, pepsin and renin. What's the function of pepsin? All proteinous food are converted by pepsin into peptones or peptides. Why renin? It adds on milk. So it converts the carcinogen in milk into what we call casein. And that process is called cordial or coagulation of milk. Now, apart from this enzyme, the gastric juice can also release an acid known as hydrochloric acid. And the function of the acid is that it creates an acidic, acidic medium for the enzymes to work and also kills the bacteria that are inside the stomach. So pepsin and renin are the enzymes that can only function in an acidic environment, while others function in an alkaline medium. Now number three, at the duodenum, which is connected to the pancreas, pancreatic juice will be released. And inside the pancreatic juice, we have three different digestive enzymes. We have the amylase, also known as amylopsin, which can convert starch to maltose. 
we have erupsin, which convert the peptone or peptides to polypeptide. And then we have the lipase, which can convert fat and oil to fatty acid and glycerol or carboxylic acid. And the last part is the small intestine, that is to be specific, the ileum of the small intestine. And in that place, the digestive enzyme release is called intestinal juice. And in that intestinal juice, we have five different enzymes. We have the maltase, which is responsible for converting maltose to glucose in larger quantity. We have sucrase, which converts sucrose in sugar to glucose and fructose. We have lactase, which converts lactose to glucose and galactose. We have trypsin, which acts on the peptides or polypeptides, sorry, that has been formed earlier and converted to amino acid. And the light paste converts fat and oil to fatty acid and glycerol. So key points to note about digestion, especially in man. Now carbohydrate food, what happened to them? Digestion of starch starts in the mouth. No digestion of starch in the stomach. Carbohydrate food digests into glucose. So the end result of digested carbohydrate is to give us glucose. Now what about protein like beans, meats? Now digestion of protein starts in the stomach and the stomach must be in an acidic medium. Now, to, no digestion of protein is found in the mouth, and proteinous food digests into amino acid. Now, fat and oil. Digestion of fat and oil starts in the duodenum. No digestion of protein in the mouth and in the stomach. And fat and oil food digests into fatty acid and glycerol, or you can call it carboxylic acid. So here's an image showing provided food and the end product at the end of digestion. So, a product of digestion, which are glucose, amino acid, fatty or carboxylic acid, and glycerol, vitamins and minerals are absorbed in the small intestine through a structure called villus. Now, the wall of the small intestine is folded, coupled with the many villi that is found inside, in order to increase the surface area for absorption of food. Water is absorbed at the large intestine. Now, assimilation, remember, that means the cell being able to use the, the, the digested food takes place afterward and undigested food enters into the large intestine and they are expelled. So here is an image showing the longitudinal session through a velos. Wow! We've come to the student's activity. It's time for you to test your understanding of this topic. Go through this 10 topic. I want to believe at the end you'll be able to answer all the questions. But if you're not able, don't worry. Go back to the video, listen, watch again, take more notes, and I believe at the end you'll be able to tackle all the questions. So here is the answer to the student's activity. 10 questions. It's time for you to mark yourself, and I hope you have 100%. So at this time, I want to say thank you for joining me in this class. Thanks for learning.